In this video, we're going to talk about polynomial functions of higher degree. Polynomial functions and their graphs. And we start with something called the leading coefficient test. If you're given a polynomial function, we can determine the end behavior of that function just by looking at the coefficient to the monomial of that polynomial with the highest degree. So for example, here's, here's four examples, but right here we have f of x equal to 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared. The highest power, the highest exponent in that polynomial function is a 4. And it's even. The coefficient is positive. Okay? And it behaves just like y equal to x squared in terms of its end behavior. If you recall, y equal to x squared looks like this. Well, the highest power is an even value, and this is a positive coefficient, then both the left and right arms will be up. I call them arms, the end behavior of the functions. All right? Something may happen in the middle, but the end behavior, all right? the left side and the right side, both be up. Now, what if it's even? Highest power is even, but it's a negative coefficient. Well, it's going to be like this. All right? The end behavior will be downward. Down on the left side, down on the right side, as you can see in this example. Okay? It's called the leading coefficient test. And if you just think of y equal to x squared, it helps you recall this. Because here's y equal to x squared, and here's y equal to negative x squared. The exponent is even. Now, what if the highest exponent is odd? And it's positive. All right? Then the left arm will be down, the right arm will be up, as you can see in this example. And lastly, what if the highest exponent is odd, but it's a negative coefficient? Well, then rather than having this, you have this. Left arm will be up, and the right arm will be down, as you can see in this example. And what helps you remember this leading coefficient test? It's just simply two functions, y equal to x squared and y equal to x cubed. Okay? Because y equal to x cubed looks like this, y equal to negative x cubed looks like that, y equal to x squared looks like this, and y equal to negative x squared looks like this. Okay? And that's called the leading coefficient test. So now we're going to do an example. I'm going to put a polynomial function up here on the dry erase board, and from scratch we're going to go through a few steps, and we're going to make a really decent sketch of this function. This is really going to help us. So we'll start with that. We'll start with the leading coefficient test. All right. Here's my example. How about f of x equal to x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 4x squared. So there's a polynomial function of higher degree. It's highest degree. The highest exponent there is 4. All right, we're going to make a sketch of this after we go through a few steps. The first thing I want us to consider is the leading coefficient test. What do we know about the end behavior of this polynomial function? Okay, well, even power, coefficient is a positive 1, so both arms will be up, right? The outer arms, the end behavior. So we know that, so I'm just going to write that down so we don't forget, right? The left arm will be up, and the right arm will also be up. In fact, I'll just point out like this, right? Actually, wouldn't they be tilted out a little bit like this because these functions run from left to right? I'll just go like this, maybe up like that. This will be the end behavior of this function. We know that. What's going on in the middle, right? So the next step we're going to consider, step two, is finding the zeros. All right. We're going to determine the x-intercepts of this function, all right? And those values are called the zeros of the function. So we're going to find the x-intercepts. You recall to find x-intercepts, you set y equal to 0 and you solve for x. So we're going to do that. Set y equal to 0. And we're going to solve for x. Uh, how do we do that? We're going to factor we are going to factor. Now notice we can factor an x squared out of this. 
we're left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. We're going to factor this completely, so I'm going to factor that. We have a trinomial there. That's x minus 2 and x minus 2 because we needed two numbers that multiplied to a positive 4 that added up to a negative 4. And negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, and negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. All right. And notice, everyone, we can rewrite this as x minus 2 to the second power. So now we have it completely factored. We can find these zeros. Let's set this factor equal to 0. And when x minus 2 squared equals 0, take the square of both sides. And we have x minus 2 equals 0, right? So if x minus 2 squared equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and x equals 2. I'm going to circle that. If x squared equals 0, we need to solve that. x equals 0. So we have two zeros. I'm going to start building the graph right now. All right. Y-axis, x-axis. 0, 1, 2. Put a dot right there and put a dot right here. Now label these. X intercepts. Here we go. Oh, now I'm going to go back to step one. Worrying about the end behavior. So I know from here, this graph's going up and outward, but it's also going up and outward from here. The last thing what's going on in the middle? Is this function crossing through this intercept and coming down here and back up? Or is this function going to bounce? What I mean by bounce is, is this function going to touch here and turn around and come and then touch here and go back up? To determine this, we're going to talk about multiplicity. All right? To determine multiplicity, all we have to do is look back at, back at our work. All the hard work is done. It's right here. Okay? See how that's even? All right. Zero has even multiplicity. Yeah, I'm looking at that power right there after it was completely factored. Two has even multiplicity. All right? Now, if that was x to the first, I would say it has odd multiplicity. And the rule is, if a zero has even multiplicity, the function will touch there and then turn back around. So I know what's doing that here. All right? Call it a bounce. It bounces. It will bounce here. Okay? Now, if that was x to the first, it would have crossed through. All right? So we're looking at these exponents right here to determine the multiplicity of the zeros. And because this is even multiplicity, it will also bounce here. It will touch here and then turn around. Okay? So this graph will just come over here, touch here, and turn around. Students always ask me, well, how high did this bounce get? Like, it turned around here and it went, did it go so high or did it get really high? If you really wanted to know, all you'd have to do, let's say we want to know what it got to right here, what value. This is a 1. So what we do is just substitute a 1 into the function. Right? Find the point. And then x equal to 1, let's see what we got. 1 to the 4th minus 4 times 1 cubed plus 4 times 1 squared. 1 minus 4 plus 4. It got up to a 1. It's like, right there is a 1. And that's what that function is doing. We made a really pretty graph. No graphing calculator needed. Of course, if you have a graphing calculator, you can check this. It's not hard to type in. Okay? And that's it.